In this presentation, we are going to discuss the origins of morality, namely, where good and evil come from. Now, I'm an atheist, and I will be presenting an atheistic perspective on the origins of morality, namely, I do not believe that morality originates from what is often called the will of God, that is, the say-so of an allegedly all-powerful, all-knowing, all-good cosmic ruler whom people call God. Now, I believe that grounding morality in say-so of anybody, human or allegedly divine, is essentially arbitrary, because say-so without reasons to back it up is essentially arbitrary. And therefore, I do not believe that it is a good justification. I believe that attempts to ground morality in the will of God, or the will of the government for that matter, which is just the other side of the same coin, is inevitably definitional. It just says, well, this word morality, we are going to equate it by definition with whatever God says is right, or whatever the government says is right. And ultimately, that robs the word morality of any real meaning on its own. For instance, when in the Bible, in the Old Testament, God orders Saul to murder every single living thing in Amalek, including the women and the infant children and the cattle, and Saul does this, except he takes one of the best cattle, and instead of slaughtering it, makes an offering of it to God, God condemns and punishes Saul for disobeying him. Now, from the standpoint of morality, and I think everybody, no matter what philosophical background they come from, will acknowledge that genocide is wrong, irrespective of who does it, who orders it, or for what reasons it is being committed, God has ordered Saul to commit an atrocity. Yet from those who say morality is defined as the will of God, well, there seems to be nothing wrong with genocide. At that point, the people who would truly back up God's command to Saul would have to drop any pretense of morality and just say, well, we obey the will of this powerful being, right or wrong. Well, I have a different view. I think in order to obtain a legitimate grounding for morality, we need to ask, what is morality or ethics? Ethics deals with the question, what ought we do? We, as human beings, ethics is necessarily a human-centered discipline, because we can control our own actions. We cannot directly control, say, the actions of another animal, because we are not that animal. We cannot directly control the actions of a rock unless we exert some kind of physical force on that rock. So we cannot frame questions like what should the animal do or what should the rock do without asking ourselves, well, what should we do to the rock or the animal to get them to do what we think they should do. So ultimately, with ethics, we start with ourselves. Without us being able to ask the question, what should we do, ethics becomes a meaningless enterprise. And we need to ask, well, what are the prerequisites of us asking the question, what should we do? Naturally, inanimate objects or dead people cannot ask that question. So the fundamental prerequisite seems to be being alive. Now, of course, that's necessary, but that's not sufficient, because aside from being alive, we have to also have the ability to ask that question. A lot of living things do not have that ability. So we have to have volition, 
We have to have the ability to choose to ask the question, what should we do? And we also have to have the physical faculties that enable us to ask it, either the faculty of speech, or the ability to ask the question in writing, or the ability to pose that question through some other medium, say through an art form, if one is capable of doing that. And in order to ask the question at all, we need to possess the faculty of reason, which enables us to formulate this kind of proposition. So, ethics has certain prerequisites, which it would be inconsistent for an ethical system to try to subvert or undermine, just as in any system there are certain starting premises or axioms that you cannot contradict within the framework of that system. Say, in logic, one of the axioms would be the law of identity. A equals A, and A cannot be not A at the same time and in the same respect. Because if you allow one contradiction, A being not A within a logical system, then you can prove anything whatsoever within that system, and it becomes absolutely meaningless. So within an ethical system, the axioms, if we wish to look at it that way, are the prerequisites for that system to exist in the first place, namely that we, the human agents who are developing this system, must be alive, we must be volitional agents, and we must have the faculty of reason that enables us to formulate these kinds of value judgments. So the first goal of the ethical system of our quest in asking what should we do, well, we should preserve the preconditions of our asking what should we do. That is, we should try to remain alive, we should try to remain volitional agents, we should try to remain capable of having a choice of asking that question, and we should try to embrace and cultivate our rational faculty, because our rational faculty is what enables us to delve into ethics. So, at the point at which you believe that some kind of morality is necessary, and the question, what ought one do, has any kind of meaning, you implicitly embrace the desirability of life, volition, and rationality. And those are the starting points. And I believe with those starting points, you can really get quite far in your ethical system. Because your life is not just something abstract, ethereal, immaterial. It is quite concrete and physical, and it has very definite prerequisites. If you want to live, you need to eat, you need to sleep, you need to find a way of making a living and supporting yourself. You need to use your mind and innovate and adapt to your surroundings as well as adapt your surroundings to yourself. And you need to use that rational faculty to enable you to survive. So all of these are implications of the necessary embracing of life as the starting point of your ethical system. Now, to be consistent, you cannot just say your own life is the ultimate goal of the ethical system, though it is, I believe, the most important goal, because if you're not alive, you can't make ethical systems at all. But if other human beings have the same essential nature as you, then if you deny them the right to life, if you deny them the right to be free, volitional, rational agents, then you have just robbed yourself of any claim to these same prerogatives. Because why should you have them if other entities that have the same essential nature as you are not allowed to have them? That's inconsistent. That's a contradiction. So in embracing an ethical system, you necessarily implicitly affirm the desirability of your own life and the desirability of the lives of every single innocent individual who has not infringed on the lives and liberties of others. So therein lies the starting point of morality 